Made in Love. That's Leona Lewis. It's Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. Uh, doing a show, things falling apart, or are they falling together? Oh, yes, interesting. I'm not 100% sure what I'm calling it. Might be something along those lines, but whatever it is. Big question is a lot of us, um, when we're kind of going through things and we start really working on manifesting, this is a really common thing, and it's actually kind of unfortunate that a lot of people forget to remind people that are learning this new that this will tend to happen with you. And what happens is, is you start consciously creating. And when you do that, oftentimes you have an intention of changing something that's going on within your existing life. It's very common. That's why most people get into law of attraction because they want to they want to create something. They want to have something that they don't currently have or they want to have a somebody or a job or money or it's usually money or love. It seems to be the two real common ones that most people kind of get into this stuff for. So we start manifesting intentionally or or consciously creating or uh, imagining from whatever phraseology you want to use. And when we start creating that reality, oftentimes our current reality needs to kind of fall apart. It needs to kind of disintegrate. It needs to like little twinklies coming off it, right? Just imagine that. If I had graphics and had any sort of budget whatsoever, that would have probably happened somewhere in there, right? But you're trying to create a new reality, and in thus creating a new reality, you have to basically uncreate your old reality. So what happens is, is things start to fall apart. Things start to come apart at the seams. Things start to break. They start to change. They start to, ah, why is this relationship not working? What happened over here? Why am I losing this job? Because you're creating change. And it freaks people out, and then they back up. They're, oh, no. But it's kind of already too late, fortunately, most of the time, but it makes it very scary. Now, so I, what my point is in a lot of this is the part of us that's really fond of the plan, having things work out this way, that's our ego. And the ego has its place in our life. So please, by no means, am I trying to, you know, squash the young feller or young fella young woman. I don't know what you would say in a girl case for the fella. What would a young lady? I guess that would, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Let's not get sidetracked, Dan. Uh, but exactly, the ego likes a plan, like where I just went off of and strayed from. And it is kind of somewhat the part of us that's conscious, right? That's the conscious part of us, the part of us that tends to have conversations in the brain. I think it's the ego we talk to. I, I, I'm, don't quote me on that, but yeah, this is kind of where I'm going right now. So, kind of what happens is, is we start to see things that are changing or in process of change, and we like to label them. We like to look at it for what it seems to be based off of our lack of knowledge currently, right? If, if things are changing behind the scenes and you don't see it, you, won't know, you don't know what's going on, right? It's kind of like in a theater in a play, right? And, you know, they, on a really good scenario, right, they, they close the curtain, and then they move stuff around, and you sometimes can hear it, maybe you can't, right? But there's movement going around, but you know because the curtain's closed that things are happening behind the scenes, and it's like, all right, cool, you understand that when the curtain reopens that all of a sudden you're going to have this new kind of illusion. Well, you do have those cases where you have more of an open stage, which is kind of, I think, more like our lives, right? You have an open stage where lights go dark, and then a bunch of people wearing black clothes and black shoes and black socks, right? And everything's black on them, right? And they're moving stuff around. And you have really, you can kind of see it happening. You don't really know what it is. You think you do, but you don't. And then the lights come on and you're like, oh, no way. That's kind of how it plays out in our life, right? It's not so much the curtain closing. Wouldn't that be lovely if that were how it played out? And I think that's how so many of us expect this to play out, like, they're going to text us, and then it's like, floosh, you know, curtain open, ba-da, there they are, ta-da, right there, bam. No, it's really more of the people moving stuff around, and if you're lucky, they maybe have some sort of reflective tape because it's like a law or something, like OSHA here in uh, California, but like they're moving things around, and you kind of can see it, but you kind of can't, and you don't really know what's going on. So a lot of us like to label it. A lot of us like to try to say, this is bad, or this is good, or I don't know what this is. What do you think it is? And then we talk about this thing that we perceive as bad. By the way, when we talk about things over and over, it just makes it keep happening. So deciding if it's good or bad sometimes isn't necessarily the point. Sometimes it's better almost just to guess. 
because it ultimately doesn't matter, right? It's going to be a passing thing in the big picture. It's going to end. Whatever this thing is right now in front of me that I'm, like, not happy about. They didn't text me back. They didn't uh, call me on Christmas. Whatever, right? Whatever your thing is right now that you're... Like, who cares? This is part of the transition. If you're truly doing the work, and, I mean, we're all talking about it, and I know it's easy to doubt, and this is my point. I think this is, again, part of why we're so quick to doubt. Because the ego's like, I like a plan, I like a plan, I like a plan. This should just manifest. It should be roses and sunshine, and there should be, like, little glowing spots in the road for the next step I'm supposed to take. It should just be that simple. And it's sometimes... In my understanding, my my opinion, and in my be- well, my belief too. I'll throw that out there, but it's true. Um, w- with all the spiritual stuff I've kind of learned and been into, we have a life path, and there's a lot of lessons to learn. And a lot of this for us, those of you that are listening, is controlling our thoughts. It's controlling that. It's it's focusing that is maybe a better way to say it. Control sounds kind of you know, but focusing though that energy, that conscious energy, on something that's beneficial to you. So again, are we deciding it's bad? Yeah, you don't need to. Are we deciding it's good? Nah, that'd be better. I mean, let's give the benefit of the doubt and assume that's the case. But ultimately, things are in change. They're, in, they're altering to make room for this new thing that you are creating. So one of the things we really have to do is really try to let go of how this should happen. We've talked about it so many times before about like, don't worry about filling in the dots. And a lot of people I know are like, yeah, well, good idea. I stop filling in the dots. But we also have to understand that things are going to unfold. And when you're doing the work and you truly know it does work, meaning you've done the parking places, you've done this, you've done that, you've manifested things in your life before, right? I mean, for those that haven't, I'm not, it's not a poo-poo. It's just, just a, it's a do the basics, get the basics down, because you get to a point where you're like, man, this totally works. And then it's not an issue of anyone having to say, hey, I want you to buy this snake oil or, hey, I want you to, I got a bridge out in the middle of nowhere I want to sell you. You know, it's not an issue with that. It's an issue that you know this now. You know this is going to take you in that direction. So instead of filling in the blanks, let the blanks fill themselves in. Let things play out the way they're supposed to. And then knowing that they're playing out that way, then knowing that you're consciously creating this, that since you've put this imaginal effort in motion, you know what the end result is. The end result is, you know, X, you and your person, or you and your new job, or you and your pile of money that you're just doing angels in, right? Your angels in your pile of money. When you know that's your end result, then what that must mean when weird things happen tomorrow or a week from now, that must mean that must be part of this journey, part of this process, part of the plan. It needs to happen, whatever it is. So it's necessary. Whether I like it or don't like it, it's necessary. It's part of this. Knowing it's necessary kind of takes away some of the sting of it a little bit. So maybe it looks funny. I typically kind of try to find, I I can find the bright side of anything, I kid you not. Honestly, and I learned this when I was very young, and it was kind of sad, but whatever. It's a a silly story. But I I had a bird, love this bird a lot. I've told you about it before. I put it on my uh, thing, and I'd play cards and listen to music, and he'd dance with me, and he'd chew on my little necklace. He literally would bop to the music. The bird was so cool, and he'd talk. I'd walk in and he'd say, here, kitty, kitty, and stuff like that. Like, hi, twit. That was his name. But he'd say that to me when I walk in the room. Bird loved me. Bird loved me. Anyway, he died. And (laughs) the thing I basically told myself was, oh, going to save money in bird seed. You know, it's like there's always a silver lining to whatever is going on. So, again, hunting and looking for that, oh, it's usually a good idea. If you can try to label it as good, you're going to go a lot further in life than if you're trying to label it as bad. And since you know where you're going, right? We're going to location X. X marks the place. Bam. This obviously is part of that journey. And if it's part of the journey, a good example, I've talked about this numerous times for any of you that have been with me for any length of time, this journey up to Northern California that I talk about frequently, it's up the I-5, Interstate 5, 5 Freeway, whatever, right? There's a place uh, up there a ways. I want to say it's roughly halfway up. It's after the what we call the grapevine. Anyway, long story short, I don't know, it's four hours away. 
it is major farming community, like pigs or cows or something. And it smells awesome. That is a wonderful part of the drive. Let me just tell you, you know when you're there and you know when you're not. So again, part of the experience, part of the drive. I know I got to go through it. I could drive way further out of my way to get around it, but it's just part of the journey. Sometimes there's a little something stinky in the way. It's okay. It's okay. There's no reason to label everything bad. It's okay. It's good. It's part of this process. Let's try to assume it's good. Then let's sit back as a thought experiment and see if we can figure out positive things that may come from this or give benefit of the doubt, especially if it's something ridiculous like I, they haven't texted me back yet. They're probably busy. Maybe that's part of it anyway. You text, you're just being sweet, but the fact that you require it and you do this eight times a day means they've got to stop what they're doing eight times a day. And sometimes uh, I used to do coding. There's a good example of, of something. When you get in the flow and you're coding and you're working on it or you're in a debug cycle right now, stopping to do something else breaks your entire chain of thought and it really sucks. So there are times where it is more difficult to actually text someone back than it's worth. Like, I need to work on this. This needs to get done. I have a deadline. And I don't, that'll kill me. If I, it's in fact, I'll, I've even at the point, like put the phone on different, so it's out of eyesight, right? So I can work on a laptop or something and it's sitting behind me on vibrate. So I don't have to hear it. So again, there are times, there are times where there is something, believe it or not, that's more important than the text message. Believe it or not. In fact, I would say text messages in the big picture probably rank really low in the level of importance. If you truly think about it, I understand it's communication. Yes, I get that. But in the big picture, when it comes to anyone doing anything within their life, a text message is definitely probably not the most important thing. Shouldn't be, probably, I'm thinking. So again, good things to consider. Hopefully this makes a difference. Believe me, when things are falling apart, it doesn't mean they're falling apart. It actually means, I think, Things are falling together. Give it a second. Give it time. Give it, give it, get through it. Give it the benefit of the doubt for sure. Because in the big picture, we are going to get through this. But so many of us kind of do this unconsciously. And it's really, I think, to, it, the more conscious we can be through our life, the more conscious choices we can make in life, the more we are going to see the rewards of that effort. I, I think that's the best way I can put it. People are living their life con unconsciously. That's fine. That's cool. You're the examples to that. You're the people doing conscious creation. You're living consciously. It's a big difference. So it's good. Again, pat yourself on the back, okay? No matter where you're at in this process, pat yourself on the back. You're doing awesome, and you're already miles ahead of many, okay? So this is a wonderful thing. Going out with another great song. This one's going to be by the Black Eyed Peas called where is the love where is the love man where is it you feel it can you feel it stan radio style <laughs> gotta find a play button though where's the love y'all again and people dying children hurt and you hit and crying when you practice what you preach and what you turn the other cheek 